Hello everyone, uh, I am Dr. Tasetuk Hussain and uh, today's lecture is about the uh, Rutherford's model of atom. Uh, in this lecture, I will uh, first divide this lecture into four different parts. So the first part I will be uh, dealing with the uh, uh, introduction and uh, then the second part uh, is going about uh, the, the alpha scattering experiment. Uh, third part will deal with the conclusions that were drawn from the uh, alpha scattering experiment. And uh, then lastly, we will uh, see the uh, drawbacks uh, that the uh, Rutherford's model of atom has. And finally, we will wrap up the uh, final conclusions from this um, Rutherford's model of atom. So, uh, first of all, let's go through the uh, introduction part. So, uh, the discovery of electrons, protons and neutrons uh, made it clear that an atom is basically uh, made up of three fundamental particles. Those three fundamental particles are protons, electrons and neutrons. These things were known before uh, Rutherford's model of atom came into being. Rutherford proposed this model in 1911 and by the time the protons, electrons and neutrons were already discovered. In order to know how and why these particles are located in an atom, Rutherford performed uh, the alpha scattering experiment. So now we'll see uh, how he did this uh, alpha scattering experiment, which is second part of our lecture. In this alpha scattering experiment, uh, Rutherford produced alpha particles uh, from a radioactive element. Uh, the element that uh, Rutherford took was radium and then placed this uh, radium in a lead block. I'll show it here and allowed them to strike on a very thin gold foil. So the main uh, raw materials that he used for this experiment was uh, the radioactive element and that was radium in this case and then the second thing that he used was the uh, uh, gold foil on which these uh, alpha radiations uh, were actually striked and then he used a screen wherein he could detect the uh, location of the alpha particles so he used a screen and for this purpose he used zinc sulfide which acts as a screen now we'll see how he did this experiment so first of all he uh, took a lead block so we'll add one more here that is lead block pb is known as lead so now he placed a lead block here so this is a lead block and inside this lead block he placed radium that's the radioactive element so the purpose of using this lead block was that it will block the radiations from all other sides and allow radiations to pass only through this region so that it can strike on this gold foil here. So these radiations are coming from radium. I'll tell you in detail how these radiations come from radium. Radium basically uh, is a radioactive element and its symbol is Ra. We uh, in chemistry it has an atomic number of 88 and 226 is its mass number. So normally what happens is this radium is decayed naturally into another element that is called as radon this element is radon and while decaying into radon it loses basically an alpha particle that is a helium nucleus and some energy this is energy so so actually this helium particle here is the one that is striking that gold foil now if we look at this helium particle what it is it contains two protons 
and two neutrons it's positively charged and is heavy it's positively charged and it is heavy now this helium or in another words we also call it as alpha particle these are the alpha particles that are hitting that gold foil now what happens is when these alpha particles are allowed to hit this gold foil this au or gold foil some of these particles pass directly through the gold foil and some of these particles they are deflected with the maximum deflection and we can we, we can call it as rebounding they are totally rebounded some are deflected by small angles and some can be deflected by large angles also like this from here now we'll see how those deflections work so these deflections that i've talked about i'll divide these deflections into three different types first deflection type i'll say is no deflection state name it as nds second i'll name the other one those which are totally rebounding we'll call it as maximum deflection state label it as mds and the third one that is there we will uh, label it as slight deflection state that is slight deflection state so why now i'll explain what these uh, different terms actually mean so no deflection state means when the alpha particle this is alpha particle when this alpha particle is not hindered and it's directly detected on this zinc sulfide screen here this alpha particle will be detected somewhere here and the ones that are rebounded will be deflected and then detected somewhere here this box is basically hold uh, zinc screen everywhere now in case of no deflection state these alpha particles pass directly through the atom and are detected on the zinc screen so we'll call it as no deflection state and about 99% of particles or helium particles that we strike on this gold foil pass through a mechanism of no deflection state now only 0.05% of alpha particles go through the maximum deflection state that means one out of 20000 particles is going to come back or rebound totally from the central part of the uh, atom and then in case of the slight deflection state if we add up to this to 100% we can see that about 0.95% of particles or alpha particles go through a state of slight deflection state that means they are slightly deflected or they are largely uh, like deflected like this and in that case what happens is the deflection angle that is theta could be less or equal to 90 or it can be uh, it can be less or equal to 90 degree in this case the maximum deflection state the theta or the angle is going to be totally when it totally is rebounded it can be around minus 80 or something uh, we can mention it as theta is equal to minus 180 degree and in case of no deflection state the theta or the deflection angle is going to be 0 degree now all of these particles whether they are going through nds mds or sds they will be detected on the zinc sulfide screen based on this experiment and this uh, alpha scattering experiment rather for found that 99% particles are going through nds 
0.05% are going through maximum deflection state, 0.95% are going through the slight deflection state. So these are the observations that he made in the alpha scattering experiment. Now what these observations mean will go with that. When there is no deflection state and we say that 99% of the particles are having this no deflection state and theta is equal to 0 degree, that means maximum space in an atom is empty or it's allowing the alpha particle to pass through. In case of uh, the maximum deflection state, we only saw around 0.05% of particles where theta is minus 180 degree going uh, by a process of maximum deflection state. That means there is a very small region inside this atom that is positively charged or it is deflecting the alpha particle. The reason for that is I already mentioned alpha particle or helium nuclei is positively charged and this positive charge is going to deflect by an angle of minus 180 degree only when it is uh, encountering a positive charge at the center so this clearly indicated that the center of an atom is positively charged so we can say the center of an atom is positively charged so it's positive that's why this uh, alpha particle is rebounding back and then some of the alpha particles which are in close which are going through the close vicinity of the central region they are deflect they are deflected slightly or they are deflected by some large angles so that is slight deflection state in that case we saw only 0.95 percent of the particles are going through these slight deflection states wherein theta can be lesser equal to 90 degree in that case we can clearly uh, say that these particles are basically going to the close vicinity of this uh, central region uh, that we name as nucleus so based on these observations we will see what are the different postulates of the uh, Rutherford's model of atom. Different postulates of Rutherford's model of atom. So, first thing, because of no deflection state, 99% particles pass through. So, that means there is a hollow space in an atom. So, that region we called as extra nuclear space. And this region is maximum in an atom because majority of the particles have already gone through NDS or the no deflection state. Secondly, we saw only a very small or minute fraction of these alpha particles totally rebounded from the central region of an atom. So that means at the center of an atom there is nucleus, it's positively charged and it has some properties like it's very small it's rigid and it's hard so nucleus is basically concentrated at the center of an atom and it's positively charged why is it positively charged because it contains protons which are positively charged these are the two uh, important observations that I mentioned here and uh, there are some uh, other observations also that Rutherford made. Uh, now since uh, 
uh, now since we saw that the center region of this atom is positively charged so uh, the main observation that he made was the atom has a small region at its center and the small region will be called as nucleus these are the main important postulates uh, that I uh, mentioned here so thus we can say that according to Rutherford's uh, model an atom consists of only two parts first part is the uh, extra nuclear space wherein uh, which is basically outside the nucleus and in which electrons are distributed so in this extra nuclear space there are electrons which are distributed I mean shown here these are electrons which are distributed in the extra nuclear space and then the second observation is that there is a nucleus which is the central region of an atom and it's very small in size it's positively charged and it's uh, very much uh, heavier now this model of uh, Rutherford is sometimes uh, also called as the solar or planetary model planetary model so why is that now since we know in our solar system we have Sun located at the center and then there is Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, likewise. In a similar manner, this atom, according to Rutherford, the central region of the atom, that is nucleus, acts like a sun because it has a fixed position. And then the electrons that are revolving around this uh, nucleus in the extra nuclear part in definite orbits can be represented by different kinds of planets that are there so there is a close resemblance between the uh, solar system and the atomic structure that Rutherford uh, has shown us here so that's why this model is also known as solar or planetary model of an atom and sometimes the electrons that uh, are revolving around this atom we also call them as planetary uh, electrons they're also called as planetary electrons so these are the uh, major observations of Rutherford now uh, we have seen the uh, introduction part we have seen the alpha scattering experiment and we also saw the different postulates that are there that I mentioned and the different conclusions that Rutherford has drawn from his experiment. Now we'll come to the uh, drawbacks that Rutherford's model has. So I'll mention uh, some important drawbacks that Rutherford's model has. So first thing uh, is the stability. of an atom if we talk about the stability of an atom in an atom the number of electrons is always equal to the number of protons the number of electrons is always equal to the number of protons that means the charge is always neutral or it is zero now in case of uh, Rutherford's model he uh, was unable to explain the stability of an atom by the time this model was proposed there is one, there was this uh, one more theory that we called as classical electro magnetic theory it's a part of electrodynamics in this theory what does this theory say is that if there is an atom and it has a nucleus which is positively charged and when electron is revolving at a very high speed around this atom so if this electron is revolving at a very high speed around this atom so what is going to happen is this, this electron is going to lose some of its energy in the form of light and while losing that energy this electron is going to follow a different trajectory or a different path that is going to be closer to the nucleus so now the electron is somewhere here because it's closer to the nucleus and while doing this process some light is emitted in a similar manner now when this electron is in this second orbit which is closer to the nucleus then it's going to lose some more energy 
and it's going to follow spiral path again and eventually it's going to collide or collapse into the nucleus if this happens then there would be no existence of an atom but in actual uh, scenario we know that atoms are more stable and they do exist so this electromagnetic theory was not explained by Rutherford's model so Rutherford could not explain the stability of an atom and why or why the electron does not collide with the nucleus so this is one of the major drawbacks of a Rutherford's model of atom now the second drawback is also related with this uh, classical electromagnetic theory so when I say that this energy is emitted in the form of a light so when this light is emitted in that case what happens is some energy is lost this light if we take this light or this light or from the third orbit so uh, we'll uh, read about it uh, in the Bohr's model so there are different series that we call as Lehman, Balmer, Baskin, Brackett, Pfand likewise so what happens is so if this orbit is the uh, first orbit and this is the second orbit this is the third orbit of an electron so if an electron goes from third orbit to the second orbit or it comes from the fourth orbit to the second orbit while losing some energy in the form of light that will be the Lehman series so we call it as n is equal to 2 that means when an electron moves from second or third or fourth orbit to the first one similarly in Balmer series when an electron moves from third fourth to the second and uh, in a similar manner from fourth fifth to third similarly so these different uh, series of lights that come there they are named after different scientists who discovered them Lehman, Balmer and Pascal now the point is when uh, if I see this Lehman uh, light this is Lehman's light this light that is emitted so in that case what happens is if I pass this light through the uh, electromagnetic field or if I pass it through the uh, uh, magnetic field I can pass it through the electric field or I can pass it through the magnetic field while doing so this light is divided into small finer lines those lines are called as Lehman, Balmer or Pascal series now if we talk about the electrical field that case that was uh, discovered by Stark we call it as Stark effect and the other one in the magnetic field we call it as Zeeman effect so both of the Z, uh, these effects Zeeman effect Stark effect uh, were not explained by Rutherford's model of atom because he could not explain the formation of these finer lines of light so this is the second drawback so second drawback we'll write here is the uh, line spectrum we call it as line spectrum line spectrum uh, was not explained by rather force model of atom now let's wrap up today's lecture so in today's lecture we learned about the rather force model of atom uh, we i introduced you to the rather force model of atom then i told you about the alpha scattering experiment and the other observations so important points from this lecture are that the uh, atom is divided into two parts one is nucleus and the other one is extra nuclear part so nucleus contains protons or it's positively charged and the extra nuclear part contains electrons and is negatively charged this extra nuclear part contains maximum space and these protons which are present in the nucleus have a very minimum space in there because of that the nucleus is very rigid and small also we learned that uh, the Rutherford's model of atom could not explain the line spectrum and uh, also it could not explain some other effects uh, like the uh, electro magnetic theory or what we call as it could not explain the stability of an atom 
I think these are some of the uh, important points that we noted down in today's lecture. I hope that you guys have uh, liked this lecture and uh, I want you guys to put in some comments and how uh, you liked the video and if there is room for some uh, improvements I would like to include those. Uh, see you in the next lecture where we will discuss about uh, the Bohr's model of atom. Until then, take care. Bye.